In this series, six rich kids are giving up the flashy supercars, the luxury five-star hotels... Three, two, one. ..and expensive designer shopping halls. This is my shoe cupboard. I keep all my loops here. ..to go skint with desperate families living on the breadline. I'm Phil. I guess nice to meet you. Sparks will fly. I think you're a bit of a um, daddy's girl. ..and tears will fall. Just start crying, give them a tissue. ..as they face the most challenging experience of their entire lives. Oh, my God, what's about this time? <laughs> Canary Wharf in London, the address of billionaire bankers, premiership footballers and pop music megastars. It's also where today's rich kid going skint, 26-year-old Jodie Weston lives. Home for Jodie is a rather plush high-rise apartment. So the building I live in is one of the most luxurious buildings in the UK. All paid for by her mum and dad. This is my boudoir, this is the Princess Palace where I reside. I've got the app lighting and the built-in wardrobes, everything so bespoke, you know, designed especially for me. And when it comes to her designer wardrobe, Jodie's certainly run up an impressive collection of outfits. My clothes do like a full lap of the flat, so they start at the door and then I have boxes of clothes as well. Here's like my daytime tops, my evening tops, loads of handbags. All these clothes are only from the last, like, year or two. They're not, like, built up over years. Like, those clothes are in a lock-up somewhere else. Rich kid Jodie doesn't just splash the cash on her vast clothing haul. I spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds a month on makeup. As you can see, this is just a little bit of my collection. I'm just addicted to clothes, shoes, makeup, all the girly stuff. And when you have all the latest gear at your disposal, it's important to pick the right places to show it off. I like to go to high-end Mayfair clubs. Cheers! Glamorous, cleavage out, good vibes. They look pretty inside, they're good selfie backdrop, good for the social media hashtag. And Jodie's a seasoned pro in the art of the selfie. Well, the selfie is all about finding your light and then like, angling it right to get the cleavage in as well. Something like... You know, I'm all that sultry kind of look with my selfies. I've got about, like, 10,000 Instagram followers, so I keep them updated with my movements, whatever the latest exotic location I'm going is. When Jodie does find herself back home, she helps to manage her very own beauty empire. Obviously, my salons were funded by the bank of mum and dad. Um, but, yeah, I do run them, so I do put in, like, the sweat labour. Jodie's glamorous lifestyle may come at a cost, but with supportive parents like hers, she never has to lose sleep over her finances. So if I go shopping on, like, my parents' credit card, I probably spend, I don't know, like a grand or something. That would be like a starter. The most I probably spent was like on a holiday to America where I spent about like 15 grand. Now Jodie's giving up the luxury apartment and fancy nightclubs to see what it's like to have to scrape by on a strict budget. But when it comes to living skint, she still expects high standards. If I walked in and it was literally like dusty, Dirty, there was like tat everywhere. I think I would go into meltdown Jodie mode. Bidding goodbye to her lavish way of life won't be easy for Jodie. All she knows is that she'll be staying with a single mum of two who survives on benefits. My name's Rebecca Wilson and I live in Barkingside. I live in a one bedroom flat with my two kids. I live in the front room and the kids have the bedroom. It's pretty cramped. <laughs> Currently, I'm unemployed. Every four weeks, I receive in benefits £832.40p. Once I've paid my bills and get some shopping, I have nothing to spare. Really, I just look for the deals, see what's on offer. I've had to cut down on things. So, you know, money stops us from doing a lot of stuff. 
I would love to be back in work if I could get a job that would cover my bills plus childcare. I loved working when I was working. Becky's keen for the rich kids staying with her to appreciate the hardships people in her position face. I hope that they learn that not everyone is so privileged in life. We have to budget, we can't always have what we want. And if Jodie thinks she'll be swanning it in five-star accommodation, she's in for a shock. There's not much space in my flat, so the sleeping arrangements is very limited. So it's sofas, floors, wherever you can find space, really. Jodie's parents want her to experience life outside her plush bubble of privilege. She's meeting her mum in the hope of getting some advice and encouragement. My fear is that I'm going to walk into some cluttered, unclean house and there'll be, like, five kids, like, running around. I think I would just scream and have, you know, a breakdown, have to leave. It's going to be a real eye-opener for you. I know you don't agree, but you have had it easy. That's helped you along the way. But it's also cushioned you from the reality outside of Canary Wharf. It'd be interesting to know, like, why the person may be on benefits or if they're just poor, like, the struggles they've been through in their life. Definitely. Good for you to see how people struggle. Not everyone's had the taste of the good life that you've had, Yeah. you know? Um, you've been on amazing holidays, you've flown first class, privately educated. Yeah. It is, is a different, different world. Yeah. So this is going to be really, really good for you to, to see a different perspective on life. Barkingside may only be 11 miles away from Canary Wharf, but as Jodie sets off to stay with Becky, it's already apparent that this is a whole different world. There's so many people about and it's not lunchtime yet, so it would seem that there's a lot of unemployed people in the area and they're just kind of walking around during the daytime. I'm feeling quite nervous. My guest is going to be here soon, but I'm hoping it all goes well. What is that, like a youth court or like a youth prison or something? I don't know. This is it. Yeah, it's not very glamorous, is it? What the hell? How am I supposed to get this up the bloody stairs? I'm used to having my concierge help me with everything. <laughs> I can't literally. Oh my god. Okay. Do you want to come in? Welcome to my house. Right. Thank you. No good turning her nose up. There's no such thing as five star accommodation when you're skinned. This is the kitchen. Yeah. There's mountains of washing oh here, so God. I need to put the washing away. I haven't done none of the washing up today. Oh, God. Um. <laughs> it's mountain up. And that's because Becky's been saving it for Jodie to do. This is the front room. Yeah. Um, oh, slash God. my bedroom, because obviously the kids are getting older now and I don't want to be in the same room too long with them. Yeah. So I've made this into a sitting area plus bedroom. Yeah, uh, it's very multi-purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, and this is the kids' room. <laughs> this is my daughter, Katie. She's Aww. 19 months. Hello, Katie. Going skint is one thing, but Jodie never dreamt she'd be living with two kids. Katie, do you want to say hi? Look. Ah, ah, ah. Hello. Oh, yeah. You go shy. I you have that effect on kids. <laughs> so, what are Jodie's impressions of having to share a small space with a family of three? I cannot do, like, this is my idea of a nightmare. There's, like, clutter everywhere. It's just like, oh, I just want to scream a bit. It's just, it's just not for me. Well, she'll have to get used to it. There's little room for any privacy in this tiny pad. 
Eddie sleeps up there, and this is Katie's bed. Oh, my God, you've got so much stuff in here as well. It is... It's a tiny flat, so it is hard to squeeze everything in as well. We've, you've got to think, with two kids mm. and me, trying to find places to put everywhere in a one-bedroom flat. Yeah. With all their toys and everything like that, it's... It's hard. <laughs> She's only just arrived, but this pampered princess is finding her new accommodation quite a come down. It's literally like a double bed in the living room with the kids' toys, the TV. There's literally like less than a stride between like the bed and the sofa area. House tour over, Becky's keen to find out all about Jodie's rich kid lifestyle. What's your um, finance situation like? Um, I am quite lucky because, like, my parents, they give me, like, half of my rent and then, obviously, I get, like, a bit of an allowance to go out with my friends. I like going to nice places, like Mayfair. Around Canary Wharf, there's a lot of rooftop bars. So my life does revolve around socialising and having fun and having the means to obviously do that quite regularly. But I also do like to get guys to buy me drinks. <laughs> I actually haven't been out for years. The last really? time I went into a club was when I was working at a club. Oh, my God. So can I ask, what's the most expensive thing you've bought? When I was 18, I had a Dior handbag, which cost, like, five, six grand, and I used to take it to school every day as my school bag. Did people think it was fake? There was, like, a lot of people that, like, had fakes, but, you know, I only buy the real. <laughs> if you can't afford it, don't buy it. <laughs> Forget expensive handbags. Becky struggles to find the money to feed her family, so she's keen to tell Jodie how hard it is. It can be pretty tough. With shopping, I have to try and budget as much as I can, like, to get past yeah. and to make it last. How much is, like, your average weekly shop, like, food shop? Um, I try and do a shop every two weeks mm -hmm. of, like, about £50. Pounds. So the £50 pound will last you two weeks? It has to. So you have, like, £3 pound a day, then, for food? Yeah. It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> I have £7.49 available. Oh, that's not good, is that? Yeah, I think her nappy knee's changing. She's getting a bit smelly. <laughs> Do you smell? No. Yes, <laughs> you have. Right, I'm just going to go and change her nappy quick. <laughs> OK. Sharing her living quarters with two kids may not be up to Jodie's ritzy requirements, but hearing about Becky's money worries has given her lots of food for thought. It does take some planning, obviously, to have that amount of money and make sure that you don't overspend, because then you end up getting into debt. You would have to sit down at the start of every month and figure out exactly how much you have to spend on each, like, part of your life, like food, shopping, whatever. It's sad to hear about these things. Surviving on benefits can be a struggle, especially when you have two kids to support. How are you going to get that down the stairs? Becky needs all the help she can get. Like getting a hand with a buggy, perhaps? As a rich kid, Jodie thinks nothing of taking a taxi when she wants to swan about town. But Becky wants her to realise that costly cabs are out of the question on a tight budget. And that means lengthy bus journeys just to get her son to school. So where are we going to pick up Edda? Um, we have to go to Chinkford to pick him up. Yeah, how far away is that? Um, it will take us approximately an hour on three buses. What? <laughs> oh, my God. They must have been close to school. There is, but I don't want to unsettle him and move him from, yeah. from that school to this school. Um, yeah. He's made friends and stuff, so... OK. You know, I'd do anything for him, so Aww. I travel for him. <laughs> the school run will give Jodie another opportunity to learn about the struggles faced by a hard-up single mum. Slumming it on public transport isn't something this rich kid is used to. 
do you ever get buses? I was in a situation a few months ago where I had to get a bus and I didn't even realise there's like bus etiquette. I thought you could just get on at any door and get off at any door, but you have to get on at a certain door That's and get off at a certain door. Like, <laughs> and how do you know like when it stops? So I was like getting the driver to tell me when it's about to stop because I didn't know like what's going on. It's all I've ever known really. Yeah. So right, here we are, this is our bus. Time for Jodie to master the art of catching public transport. One ride down, two to go. But already, Jodie's struggling. So we've got to walk about five minutes to the next bus stop now. Oh, so we've got to do three buses and walks in between the buses as well. Yep. <laughs> it's, not, it's not just one of them where you get off at the bus stop and then get on a different bus, you have to walk. It's not very glam. I want to be, like, <laughs> in the jacuzzi, like, chilling. Unfortunately for Jodie, the school's miles away from a luxury spa and beauty salon. Here it is. This is our one. It's just so long and boring and the bus is so dirty and everyone's miserable on the bus and it's just like, it's just not happy times, is it? This is such a long school run. I can imagine like traveling this twice a day, like just a few hours apart. <laughs> Which way are we going now? We've just got to cross here and then go up to the left and it's just there. Uh, is that another bus that's stop? That's the bus stop, oh yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> This is like an excursion or something. So this is the last bus now. Oh, thank God. But then we've got to come back this way, so... <laughs> but there's no other way to do it. Oh! <laughs> An hour and three rides later, they finally arrive at the school. I'm not going to lie, that was an epic journey to the school. Imagine if it's raining, that must be a night, then you've got the umbrella in your hand as well or something. It's just a mummy thing, really. I, that's yeah. the way I look at it. You know, you have your responsibilities to do when you're a mum. And mine is to get him to school. So, Edis, how was school today? Good. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. And what did you eat for lunch? I don't know. For Jodie, the school runs a stark insight into how difficult life could be supporting a family without her parents' help. Me and Becky are basically the same age, but our lives are completely a million miles apart. I live to have fun, and her life seems dedicated to her children, and she has, like, schedules and all sorts of stuff that she needs to follow. Jodie may love living the high life back home, but there's little partying about in this house. Becky wants her to realise that with two kids, there are always jobs to be done. You can do some washing up if you want to have a go. Do you not have a dishwasher? No, I hate what? them. Why? It's lazy. I've never washed dishes with a sponge before. Really? In your whole life? Yeah, I've probably only washed about three dishes in my life. This will be a chance for Jodie to show she's not shy of cleaning up after the kids. But with few maternal instincts, she's conveniently developed a case of OCD. I hate this. I'm <laughs> such a clean freak. I have a thing about stuff being dirty, like I can't deal with it. If like something dirty touches my finger, it just like, freaks me out. <laughs> so how do you do all your cleaning and stuff? Well, my mum still does my washing for me. And then I've got a dishwasher. No such luxuries in this house. The bottles, you have to get your fingers right in and just oh, make sure you've washed every bit of the bottle. Although Jodie actually manages to get her hands wet, it's not long before she bottles it. Had enough of washing. Get on. Yeah, <laughs> I need <to> time out. <laughs> but Becky's not letting Jodie off that easily. It's dinner time, and on the menu tonight, homemade spaghetti bolognese. Have a go at chopping the onion. Okay. I need little squares. Like... No. Okay. But once again, it seems Jodie needs to sharpen up her kitchen skills. This is not fair. I'm not domesticated. I think that's all right now. Perhaps using two hands would help? If you hold it together while you chop it, it's a bit better. What the hell? Where's cat? 
Tonna, retire. Up a little bit more. A couple of minutes in, Jodie decides she simply can't stand the heat and has to get out of the kitchen. Oh my god, the onions are like trying to kill me off. Like I can't even breathe. I had to like leave the room. It's just giving me a cough attack. <laughs> it's just disgusting. I can't believe she's never cut an onion. Like, who's never cut an onion? Seriously? Hopefully she'll rejoin us soon and maybe stick around in a bit more and get the dinner finished for me. <laughs> Determined Jodie pulls her weight and with the two kids' bath times to sort, Becky summons her back to dinner duty. Do you find it, like, better for your budget to order takeaways or to cook yourself? Definitely not takeaways. <laughs> I um, wouldn't be able to afford a takeaway. I just think when it comes to the kitchen, it's like the less time I'm spending in there, the better for me. Saving the pasta, I'd buy it like already pre-cooked and I'd just whack it in the hot water for a little bit just to... Oh, really? You won't cook it from of... this? No, it's too long. Like, you can buy it like the nice linguine. It's already half made. Pop it in, it's good to go. There's no such thing as posh pasta or takeaways when you're surviving on a pittance. It's do it yourself when you're skint, and Becky's keen for Jodie to get stuck in. Cook it till it's browned off, and then empty the oil out without losing the meat. Do you have a sieve? Um, no. You hold it in with the spatula. What the hell? Right. I'll see you in a minute. So, will Jodie be able to master the art of bolognese, or will she bottle it once again? Oh my god, it's going to take ages till they're bloody soft. I don't think she's been in the kitchen much, to be honest, so I'm hoping that she cooks the dinner all right and doesn't burn it too much, because um, otherwise we'll end up with no dinner. <laughs> it's no laughing matter, Becky. Looks like pasta bolognese isn't quite going to plan. Oh, that's not right, is it? Am I going to put it in the pasta? Now it's just looking like a bit tragic. <laughs> I've never done one of these, like, meals from scratch type scenarios. I wouldn't be doing, like, the chopping up of the onions and all that palaver. I'd just buy some sauce and mix it and then grate some cheese on the top. I think she needs to get in that kitchen a bit more or do a little course or something. <laughs> a half hour later, the reluctant cook's finally plated up. I look. Say thank you. So, how will Jodie's efforts go down with the judges? Babe, your child is, like, throwing pasta at me. <laughs> oh, OK. Hey. What mess are you making? All right, let's now time out. Time now out. I have to sit there. She doesn't like mess. Oh my god, it's just chaos. I can't do pasta frying around, baby screaming. <laughs> Katie even threw some pasta and spaghetti bolognese at me and like hit my coat, and then I'm sitting eating my food. All I was thinking was, this is the bed where the baby's nappy gets changed on, and I cannot deal with this. <laughs> I need a time out. Experiencing the daily battles faced by a single mum on benefits has been a big shock for this rich kid. Hiya. Hiya. Time to seek some encouragement from her mum. My first impressions is not the best. Like, one room's just floor to ceiling of just stuff, like, just clothes, toys, like nappies, just floor to ceiling in one room. Come on now, you can do this. And then I had to go on a school run and her kid goes to school over an hour away. So she takes like three buses every morning. She wakes up at like 6 a.m. or 5.50 or something and goes oh, on this like trek to the school like one hour away. Just think if you had to go with her every day. I know, I hell no, I'll be checking out on that. <laughs> Putting yourself through all that, you can put yourself through it as well. Yeah. Come on now. She went for a budget. Like, she doesn't have much money. 
Yeah, it just sounds like it sounds like money's really tight. She's only got like seven pound in a bank account, and it's just yeah, it's not good. At least she's got something. Oh yeah, like I cooked spaghetti bolognese for the kids. That was an experience. You I actually to... cooked it from scratch. Yeah, literally, I chopped the onion up, put the beef oh in, God. and her kid threw pasta on my coat. Like, imagine. And then they want me to stay over tonight, but I don't know if I'm feeling it because it's just so cramped. Like, the bed is in the living room, and there's just like kids' toys everywhere, and it's all got pasta on it. So it's like, where am I going to oh. sleep? Do you know what I mean? Well, we all have to do things in life we don't want, love. You can't cop out. You're committed to doing this, so you need to see it through. End of. There's pasta all over the floor, ma'am. It's disgusting. So clean it up. Hell no. You can't cop out. <laughs> You're committed to doing this, and you have to do it. It's one night. I'm sure you can cope with one night. All right, well, I'll see you soon. Wish me good luck. Okay. All right, take care. I'll make you some pasta for when you come home and throw it out you. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, Mum. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Say night-night. Night-night, Baba. Love you. Talking to her mum has given Jodie encouragement to experience more of the challenges single mothers face. Sweet dreams. Don't let the bed bugs bite. But not enough to stay the night. Like, no offence, um, but I don't think I'm going to be staying here tonight because I just want to have, like, a bit of peace and quiet in the hotel. This is a bit much for me. And also, the sofa's, like, your bedroom, so I want to give you that space as well. OK, that's fine. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. As she heads off to a hotel for the night, Jodie's unsure if she can survive another day of this. Today has been atrocious. <laughs> like, atrocious. I think I'm already having pre-nightmares about going back to Marlborough. I don't know how much more I can take. You can tell that she's not used to this sort of surrounding. But hopefully tomorrow she knows what to expect. It's the start of Jodie's second day living skint. But despite promising to return early to help Becky take her son to school, she's nowhere to be seen. I got up at 10 to 6 and done the breakfast. And then I dressed the kids and got to the school run. It was very cold and wet. It would have been interesting if Jodie was there to see her reactions. But unfortunately, she didn't make it out of bed on time. <laughs> So, what's the rich kid's excuse for the no-show? I decided to skip the school run because it's just... I can't be dealing with that right now. And I'm literally, like, dreading today, like, if it's going to be a repeat of yesterday, like... I'm just, like, up every day at, like, 9.30, 10 o'clock, like, get ready, listen to some tunes, like, getting the vibes of the day, and then I go to work when I feel like I'm going to go. Do you know what I mean? So it's just her life's just mental. Only two and a half hours late. Hello, morning. Jodie eventually pitches up. Oh, it's a shame you couldn't make the school run this morning. I've done the school run. I oh, know, I'm sorry. I just was... couldn't handle it. <laughs> I just couldn't. Jodie's taken time out in a hotel, so Becky wants her to learn that as a single mum, she's never off duty. At about one o'clock in the morning, Katie was coughing really bad. She's yeah. had a little cough. And she puked everywhere, all over her bed, all in her hair. Oh, my God. So I had to get her up and bath her at one o'clock in the morning. Oh and I had to God. change all the bed for her. Oh, my God. And then I was up at 10 to 6 this morning. So can Jodie sympathise with the struggles of a mum dealing with a sick child? How was it in the hotel? It was nice and warm, and I had a bath, really quiet, just watched some TV, and it was just good, chilled vibes. Hmm, huh, perhaps not. Well, I had an eventful night, so... It sounds it. Mummy's job don't finish there. Yeah, I'm not it's, ready to have kids anytime soon. It still runs once you go to bed. It's a 24-hour job, really. Being on call 24 hours a day gives Becky little chance for a break, but today is a rare exception. 
Um, I'm just getting ready to go out for a coffee with one of my friends. OK. Um, if you want, you can come along with us. All right, then. Yeah, yeah? I'll come with you. OK, well, if you don't mind waiting a second, I'm just going to get some bits together and then I'll be ready. Jodie's fast learning that life's never simple when you're a single mum. Even getting ready is a bit too stressful for me. Even getting the baby out the door is just like a half an hour job. I just can't be dealing with it. <laughs> It seems late mornings and luxurious pampering sessions are more Jodie's style. I literally went back to the hotel and had like an hour long bath. But well, at least someone got to relax, eh? For flat broke Becky, coffee with friends is one of the few cheap ways of taking precious time off. So, what do you do for fun then? Um, go to the parks, go, sometimes we go swimming. Yeah. Is that um, always involving, like, KT? Yeah, everything Edith? I do is involving the kids. I don't have any other life, you know. It, um, there's, it's not like I can just drop them, they're so young. OK. I mean, what sort of things do you like doing? I go to the pool a lot and the jacuzzi in my building. Go to the cinema room a lot and watch movies. You've got a cinema in your building? Yeah, it's quite cool. I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. <laughs> you could give me a cinema room if you want. <laughs> <laughs> you pretty much got on there without your TV. Yeah, nice try, Jodie. <laughs> Becky's friend Hina has invited her round for coffee. Hello, how are Hi, you? Nice to meet nice you. To meet you. I'm Jodie. It's a chance to show Jodie how lucky she is compared to lots of others on the opposite side of the wealth gap. So, um, can I just ask you how you got your business started? Um, so, when I was 22, yeah. I was really into beauty and mm -hmm. my dad's always been like a finance director. And so, he invested in my first salon. I started that, managing that when I was like 22 and running it. Do you feel quite fortunate that you've had that help to get started and stuff? Yeah, I am grateful for the opportunity, definitely. Like, you do everything for your kids, so I feel like if you have the means to obviously help your children, I do feel like, you know, that's a good thing. So do you pay all your own bills? No, I don't. I do contribute to my bills quite a bit, but then I get them, like, topped up. Maybe we should go and bunk in with her <laughs> for a while, eh? <laughs> So, do you go away a lot? This year, I've been going away once every month or two months. I've just been in this vibe at the moment where I just want to travel all the time. So, yeah. I've been to, like, Dubai, been to Mexico. I'm going to go to Vegas again next year. I've been to Marbella quite a few times in Morocco. The hotels are beautiful there. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Do you guys ever get a break, like, get to go on holiday? Well, um, flights are really expensive. It's just not affordable for people that haven't got a lot of budget, so... We've both had it pretty tough, haven't we? We have, but um, life goes on, especially when you have children, definitely. Yeah. Do you ever find it hard to communicate with your children? Obviously, money might be a bit tight, so you can't get them everything they want. Oh, yes, because um, kids, they don't understand it. You just have to stick your guns and just, like, put your foot down and just say no. So, yeah, it, it, it's hard. It, like, it can sometimes, like, be like, oh, God, like, I wish I could say yeah, but, you know, I can't. Today's chat has begun to make Jodie realise just how hard it is for a single mum bringing up kids on her own. She thinks nothing of extravagant nights out, but for Becky, family entertainment usually has to be free. So whenever I get any, like, free time and family time, this is where we like to go. So we go to this um, farm because it's free yeah. to go in there. Here we are, Katie. You're going to go and see the animals? Yeah, I don't really think I've got the most suitable footwear on today. But, you know, you've got to be glam, haven't you? I'm just used to being a mummy. <laughs> I tucked the heels a long time ago. <laughs> He's so scared of me. I can run away. His wool would make a very nice jacket, wouldn't it? 
She's struggled to cope with the demands of living skint, but Jodie has a newfound appreciation for the daily battles that Becky faces. Do you feel like money worries are on your mind, like, 24-7? Of course, because sometimes I don't have the money to cover every single um, bill I've got and stuff. So, like, I'll worry about, like, the shopping and worry, like, how am I going to do it this month and stuff like that. So I try not to, but it is always there. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I got the impression that it is something that's on your mind quite a lot. You know, like, it can cause, like, depression and this type of thing. So I feel like mentality-wise, um, that is the main, like, difference I see. Yeah. I think, like, with, like, someone that's more wealthier... Yeah. I think that they don't have all the money stress. They can just get up and do what they want, really. I was kind of raised in this, like, jet set lifestyle, but both my parents do come from, like, very poor backgrounds. So how did your mum, like, sort of pick herself up? She literally just worked her way up from, like, basic secretary work. She just kind of was so determined to get out of it and really make something of her life. I do want to go back to college and learn something different and maybe yeah. get back out there. Yeah. Um, because I do like working. But, I mean, a bit that holds me back is um, I have dis I'm dyslexic. Oh, so are you? Like, that yeah. holds me back a little bit. I try not to let it get in my way, but yeah. sometimes it, it does, you know. Yeah, of course. Where's the cow? I think that she realised that everyone has to face different challenges in life, like, cos obviously she didn't know that I was dyslexic and stuff, so I think that kind of opened her eyes to that. I hope she's learnt some bits from, like, doing this, you know? Living Skint has given rich kid Jodie a new appreciation for the struggles single mum Becky faces. She may have been shy of kitchen duties earlier, but to give Becky a well-deserved break, Jodie's offered to make a farewell dinner. It's um, chicken dippers and curly fries. Oh, I love a curly fry. <laughs> Thank you, and I'll leave you to it. Luckily, it's just curly fries and some sort of chicken nugget thing, so I won't be having to make it from scratch. With such an easy meal to prepare, what could possibly go wrong? Well, failing to turn on the oven for a start. I don't know what's going on with this, cos, like, I'm used to putting it on, like, 200 or something, and this is, like, 1 to 9. Having promised to make dinner herself, Jodie's determined not to ask for help. Oh, my God. That is a lot of curly fries. I don't know what number to put it on. I'll put it on the top, then it'll be made quicker. I can't open it. Hello. Do you know how to open this bag? <laughs> what the hell? How do I open? Oh, my God. Oh, shit. <laughs> OK, that does not look promising. I basically, like, pulled the door off the drawer. So I'm going to put about 10 nuggets in. I'm not putting out too many cos I don't want a repeat of last night and have chicken nuggets thrown at me this time. Done. Are you ready for dinner, kids? Yes. Are you hungry? I'm, I'm hungry. I Are just you? want to eat, yeah. With the fries and nuggets done, Jodie can finally start serving up. But it seems she may need some practice with her plating up skills. Oopsie. I can't find anything to dish up the curly fries, so I'm using the fork. This is not going very well, as you can see from the mess on the floor. Time to find out what the family make of her efforts. Here we go. Hi, there you go, Edis. Thank you. There you go, Katie. Oh. Thank you. 
I can't help notice, but they're a bit burnt, the nuggets. I know, I'm sorry, babe. Chips ain't burnt like the... Uh, I know, cheese. the chips are, like, undercooked and the chicken nuggets are overcooked. So it's kind of complements each other and then we meet in the middle and it's just cooked. That's not quite how cooking works, Jodie. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I don't think the kids like it. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> but at it's least, okay. let's look on the right side. At least <coughs> Katie's not throwing it today. <laughs> no, she's just <laughs> pushing it away <laughs> and spitting it on the plate. It's clear Jodie won't be taking home any new kitchen skills from her time living skint. But the experience has given her an insight into the challenges she'd face raising kids on her own. What have you learnt from it, from this? Um, I've learned quite a bit from the experience. I feel like mine and your lives are so polar opposite. They're just so different. I've learnt about, you know, how hard the struggle is for you. So that's really eye-opening for me. Yeah. It is hard, it is a struggle. Every day you face is a different struggle, you know? Yeah. I'm hoping that my situation improves in the near future. I'm hoping maybe, like, I can start work once Katie starts school, so... Yeah. Bearing in mind the struggles Becky faces as a single mother, Jodie has a special treat for her. I know how chaotic your life is and you don't get any me time. So I've got you a little gift, which is a voucher to spend at one of my salons. So if you want to relax with a massage or a facial, you can spend the gift voucher on whatever treatment that you would like. Oh, maybe I can go and treat myself to a massage. I don't think I've ever had a massage, actually. Aww. Like, a proper one. Thank you so much no for that. No problem. Thank you. As she says her goodbyes, Jodie knows she's returning home with an appreciation of the privileged life she leads. Thank you for coming. No problem. Goodbye. Thanks for having me. All right, thanks a lot. Take care. You That's too. all right. Bye. Bye. Her experience of living on the breadline has tested her to the very limit. No kids for me any time in the near future. I feel like the whole experience for me it was kind of eye-opening, but at the same time, it was very draining for me because it was being in a completely different environment, completely different mentality, and just living someone else's life that is just very chaotic. Thank God I'm on my way home now and I'm not looking back. <laughs>